Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope everybody's having a good morning, man. Um, so I wanted to do this video for a while now, and I feel like now is the right time because of the unfortunate and untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman. And I'm very saddened to hear about that. Um, all I really know about Chadwick is, is, you know, the movies that he's made, but he seemed like a really legitimate and honest guy, man. Um, so in honor of that, I wanted to go ahead and make this video that I've been wanting to make for a while, actually, um, about drawing the comparisons between the movie Black Panther and how it applies to our lives as Christians. Um, and of course, if you're not a Christian and you're hearing this, hopefully this can help you understand it a little bit better. So uh, I have a sign in my home right above my TV that says, uh, what is it, Jeremiah 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I have one friend, she actually was like, you know, why do I have to call him Lord? Why do I have to call him King? And the um, best way I can describe it, the best way I can think about it was, uh, I, I was asking God, actually. I was like, God, how do you and I have this intimate and close relationship and a very personal and loving relationship with one another, but I also honor you as King? Because I think everyone loves Jesus the Savior. We all love Jesus the Savior, sing about his grace and his mercy. But a lot of times it's hard for us to honor him as king. So I asked him about that. And the thing that popped into my head, I felt it in my spirit, was the movie Black Panther. And specifically King T'Challa's relationship, who was played by Chadwick Boseman, uh, with his general Okoye. And it was funny, I actually started praying and I asked God, I was like, God, could you really use Marvel movies to, to speak to people? And I just felt it in my spirit. He was like, I used a donkey to speak. I can do whatever I want. So that's actually what just made me want to start making these videos about, you know, movies and the comparisons that I draw between them. And hopefully it helps break it down and, and helps someone else understand the way it did me. But anyway, so let's go ahead and look at that relationship between T'Challa and Okoye. They were close with one another. They were tight. They loved each other and they knew each other intimately. You know, in the opening scene of the movie Black Panther, when she's like, don't freeze. And he's like, I never freeze. And then they joke about it later, you know, when his sister's like, did he freeze like an antelope in headlights? You know, they, they joke with one another. They're very close. They care about one another. When T'Challa beats M'Baku in the challenge for the throne of Wakanda, everyone's happy. Everyone's cheering. They're not like, oh, man, we got to follow a king. <sighs> They're happy because T'Challa is a good king. He's a benevolent king. Everything he does is for the betterment of the people of Wakanda. Everything he does. And sorry, I'm going to move this down here a little bit, man. I talk with my hands a lot, so yeah. Um, but everything he does is is for the betterment of Wakanda. It's always good, right? And then you see what happens when there's a bad king. You see what happens when Killmonger comes in there, and he does not have the betterment of Wakanda in mind, and he's more of a militant. So I think that's something that we need to understand as Christians, is that God our Father... He's because he's our father as well. He's he's he serves both as king and as father. He's a good king. He cares about us. He he wants to to have a close, personal, intimate relationship with us, like T'Challa and Okoye had. And he also wants us to know that everything he does for us is for our good, is for our benefit. Even when we look at things that we don't want to do, you know what I mean? We're like, well, why is this a sin? And why is that a sin? And that's not that bad. And oh, why has God got a problem with that? You look at it, man, it's it's real, It's real. for our own benefit. Like for example, let's just go ahead and take sex, right? Uh, a lot of people, they're like, you know, well, why has God got a problem with premarital sex? Why is that a sin? Why is it bad? Well, it's a sin because it goes outside of God's original intention. God's intention was for one man and one woman to be joined together, and what they were going to share is supposed to be beautiful. You know, it's, it's truly as close as two people can be. You're two, the two are literally becoming one flesh, and it's supposed to be a beautiful, intimate, holy thing that's a gift from God to honor God. So anything that steps outside of God's original intention is, of course, sin. But I think it goes further than beyond that. It's not like he's up there like, I don't want you kids to have fun now. Stop it. No, he cares about us. And we can get around unwanted pregnancies. We can get around STDs. One thing that you cannot escape if you choose to have premarital sex 
is the soul ties that are created. You're, you're, you're creating these connections with people that are not broken. And then jealousy comes in and insecurities and anger and all these complications, especially when you bring them into another relationship where you're trying to honor God or in, even into your marriage where that's where sex should be for to keep the marriage bed holy. And then you bring in all these problems and all these things that just could have been avoided if you had waited and did it God's way. And we look at it as, oh, well, why has God got a problem with it? God doesn't want us to have fun. No, he's trying to spare us pain. He's trying to spare us stress and conflict and fighting and, and you know, uh, confusion and doubt and worry and insecurities and, you know, comparisons and all these things that he never intended for the husband and wife to have because it was supposed to be just them. You know what I mean? So... It's not like he's like, I don't want you guys to have fun. Don't do this. No, he's like, I love you and I care about you very deeply. And this will be so much better if you just wait. And I'm trying to spare you pain. I'm trying to spare you hurt. I'm trying to spare you stress and tears. It's not because he's mean. It's because he cares. So even when we don't see it, he's working. And, and the things that he tells us to do are for our own benefit. They're not. They're, they're not to keep us down. It's to help us. And at the same time, God is also holy. He and, and he requires a standard of holiness. Jesus met that standard and we are forgiven and we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. But we should strive to honor God. We should strive because it is that close personal relationship like Akoye and T'Challa had. So we should want to honor him. We should want to do the things that please him and the things that are holy and righteous because that's what we do for people that we love, right? You know, um, if you're in a relationship with a girl, do I? I'll, I'll never, ever want to watch Cupcake Wars on my own, ever. I want to watch Daredevil or Star Wars or Die Hard or, you know, Rambo something. But, you know... She wants to watch Cupcake Wars, and you love her, and you care about her, so you sit down and you watch Cupcake Wars. Is it what you want to do? No. But you love her, and you like doing things that make her happy. You like buying her flowers. You like buying her teddy bears. You like doing all these things just to, just to make her happy. How much more should we do that for the one who saved our souls? For the one who saved us from eternal damnation? How much more should we, should we be like, you know what? This goes against my flesh and what I want to do, but I love you, Father, and I want to honor you. So let me do what you've called me to do because I love you. And I want to do that for the one who gave everything for me, right? And also the second part of that, at the end of the day, once again, he is king. So he's not asking for our opinion. Um, at, at the end of the movie, Black Panther and uh, Okoye, she's fighting the man she loves. I forget his name. Uh... But they're, they're fighting because they're on two different sides. He's on Killmonger's side. She's on T'Challa's side. And they're fighting. And he's like, you would kill the man you love? And she says, for the throne? Absolutely. She has no hesitation. That is where her loyalty lies. That is who she serves. And, you know, she's, everything that comes before that, that is her king. And I think that's important for us to remember as well as Christians. Because, you know, there's a lot of times, man, let's just go ahead and be honest. If sin wasn't fun, people wouldn't do it. If it wasn't natural, people wouldn't do it. When when kids mess up, they hide things. They they put it under the thing. Or did you do that? No. You know, it's it's we're all born into sin, so it's natural, yes. And a lot of times it is fun. It's always enticing. It's always fun, but it takes you down deeper and further than you ever wanted to go. And even though it might start off as fun, it always ends bad. But that's a video for a whole other time. I'm probably gonna go into that when I do my devil's advocate video. Um anyway. Like I said, God's not asking for our opinion. He is king, and we need to honor him asking. Like I said, we love Jesus the Savior. We love Jesus the Lamb, the you know, the Lamb that was slain, that you know, bore our sins and forgave us and, and took our punishment. We love that Jesus. Jesus is also a lion. You know what I mean? He's also He's all He's the Lion and the Lamb. He is Savior, Father, and King. So when he says no. This is a sin. 
the wolves who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's not asking our opinion. He's telling us this is the way it is. Now, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. So if you've accepted Jesus in your heart, you're just right, holy, forgiven in the sight of God because of Jesus forever. However, don't waste your salvation. Don't waste your uh, gift, rather. But say, you know what? You are king, and I need to honor you as such. And that's something that I struggle with on a daily basis. Everyone does, man. I mean, it, it you know, doesn't matter if you're a senior pastor, you've been serving the Lord for 70 years, or if you got saved last week. That's something we're always going to struggle with until we pass from this life to the next when we're united with the Father and the Son in eternity. We're always going to struggle with it. We're always There's always going to be this war between flesh and spirit, right? And that's why we need to feed the spirit because the flesh is always right there, man. It's always easy to, to, to give into that. So we need to feed the spirit so we can say, you know, I want to do these things. And I know for me, uh, when I'm in my word, when I'm, when I'm reading the Bible and I'm just studying it and I'm asking him like, all right, Father, what do you want to share with me, Dad? What do you, what do you want me to gain out of this and then I read something I'm like okay well let me study that let me meditate on it all day um that's when I find it much easier to honor him as king when I'm away from it when I'm not reading my bible when I'm not reading this love letter that he gave us it's much easier to give into flesh and not honor him as king and then run back to him as savior always but not honor him as king and that's something that we need to be very careful of and I think that just comes with intimacy and the closeness of this relationship. You know, how do you get close with a girl that you like, right? You start texting her. You start calling her. You guys go out for ice cream and go see a movie or go to the zoo. Or, you know, that's that's how you guys get close. And you establish that intimate relationship. You spend time together, right? And you talk often. And, you know, when she sends you a text, you can't wait to read it and something like that. So open up your Bible and read this love letter. Get excited. See what he has to share with you. See what he wants to do with you and spend time with him. Spend time with him. Talk to him. Tell him about your day. Tell him what you're going through. Tell him what you're stressed about. Tell him what you're excited about. Tell him, you know, I mean, like, I, I've, I remember I was watching my favorite TV show ever. I was watching Psych and I'm sitting on the couch just laughing and joking, talking with God about how much I liked that show. And I'm like, thank you for giving these people this idea for this creative, this creative thing that I enjoy so much. And I just felt it in my spirit that he was with me, enjoying this show with me, you know? So it's a very close and intimate relationship, and that's the relationship that God wants with us. And like I said, I think that's the best representation that I could think of is the, the visual representation from the movie Black Panther between King T'Challa and his General Okoye. They're close with one another. They love each other. They care about each other deeply. They laugh, joke. However, at the end of the day, she honors him as king, and she obeys him as king, and she's loyal to him as king, but he's a good king, and he's a benevolent king, and everything he does is for the betterment of the people of Wakanda. And I think that's a very good visual representation, something for us to be able to see and kind of quantify and be like, okay, that's how God feels about us, and that's the relationship that God wants with each and every single one of us, not just his generals, not... You know, just as, as, you know, people in his courts, he wants a relationship like that with each and every single one of us. So I hope that can be encouraging. I hope that can uh, help someone understand a little bit better. Uh, I know it did me. And uh, sorry if I babbled a little bit and kind of got off track. But anyway, uh, I am really deeply saddened to hear about the passing of Chadwick Boseman. I really hope that he was saved and that he is with the father and uh, hopefully one day him and I can talk about this video and be like, yeah, wasn't that so cool? And, um, you know, my, my heart and prayers go out to his family. And, uh, you know, just appreciative for the movies that he gave us. You know, his portrayal of Jackie Robinson, um, Thorogood Marshall, and, of course, uh, King T'Challa in these Avengers movies. So, Wakanda forever. I appreciate it. Uh, I love you. Jesus loves you. That's our story. We're sticking to it, man. Love you guys.